Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Democracy 3. My name is Root Negative and let's get cracking with another episode. Uh, one of our, another one of our ministers wants to talk. This can't be good either. Uh, yeah, she's wanting to quit. No worries, Nicole. Good luck. Positive discrimination. There are calls for a law to expressly set quotas for the employment of ethnic and other minorities by large corporations and government institutions. This would put pressure on companies to give higher priorities to some job candidates than others on the basis of their race, sex, or age. Pass the law. We need this law. In economic terms, it makes no sense for people below or above a certain age to be rendered unemployable. Also, in human rights terms, this is much needed compensation for years of discrimination in the workplace against ethnic minorities, women, and the, the elderly and the disabled or reject the law. This is a deeply flawed law. It makes no sense to fight discrimination by using discrimination. It creates two problems. That of the minority members who feel they may not have achieved the position on merit and the resentment of the potential employment employee who was denied the job. Now, discrimination is something, is a big issue in Australia, especially racial discrimination. And it's reared its ugly head just recently. One of our sporting heroes by the name of Adam Goods has uh, been on he's been involved in quite a, a big problem. Basically what happened, right, he's a football player and he was playing the game and he kicked a goal and he celebrated by trying to throw a like uh, actioning throwing a spear at the audience. Now the audience took umbrage at this because Adam Goods is an Aboriginal Australian and quite a proud Abor Aboriginal Australian. He is very, very outspoken. He's very, um, he's just a proud man. He's proud of his heritage. He's proud of who he is. He's proud of who his people are. And, and that's something that, you know, you don't see too terribly often, um, just people being proud of, of who they are. And so, he, yeah, he celebrated in a traditional way, you know, um, Aboriginal dance, trying to throw, uh, actually throw, throwing a spear at the audience, and the crowd really didn't take it well. So they started booing Adam Goods. Now this spread, and everyone started booing Adam Goods, and it crossed, it crossed some lines, because it started, it's it's like it started to cross a racial line, and these people they didn't like to. Um, you know, they, they say it's because Adam Goods is a jerk, but it really didn't, really doesn't seem like that. It seemed like they had a problem with him uh, acknowledging his heritage in in actually a round of football, right? They, they do these these rounds that are themed. So like one, one round will be like uh, for breast cancer. So they'll all wear pink. Uh, this, this round happened to be Aboriginal round. So they're, they're all in Aboriginal um, themed Guernseys and it's to acknowledge firstly the Aboriginals who play AFL and then the secondly the they have the Aborigines who are the original uh, inhabitants of Australia. So it crossed some lines and it got really ugly and at the end of the day racism is huge in Australia. It still is. It will be for a very very long time until people can accept that the way someone looks doesn't change who they are on the inside. Like I, I've met some people that I hate, and I've met some people that I really like, and never has skin colour actually played a part in that. And that's that's kind of where I think the country needs to get to, because right now people will judge others on the colour of their skin, and it's that discrimination is based upon what is it? Statistically validated stereotypes. So they're saying that based upon an average that applies to everyone and we all know that an average does not apply to everyone it is an average so we're going to reject this law however I'm going to do something else because really after having said all that it really should have been uh, approved but that's not the right way of going about it I don't think so we've still got a surplus and ooh, we've got an increase in polls nice so as I said we've got a discrimination issue in Australia so we're going to do, bring in the Race Discrimination Act. Now, the other thing that happened just recently... Oh yes, they're going to love that. Yep, I like it. 
Um, the other thing that happened, well, it was actually a couple of years ago, was the Aborigines got acknowledged in the Australian Constitution. And there was also, wait, they weren't, they're not acknowledged in the Constitution, but there was an apology from the Australian government for some actions that the Australian government did back in the 70s and 80s. Basically, they took Aborigine children from Aboriginal families and then placed them with white families to um, try and uh, basically use numbers to eradicate the Aboriginal population. It was a very, very... Um, how would you say it? It's a, it's a bad form of genocide. It's just not overt. You know, the... Um, it wasn't... The Australian government didn't just go out and kill Aborigines like they did in the early 1900s. They tried to effectively breed them out, which is a much, much uh, more pernicious version of genocide, but it's still genocide. So there's that in Australian history, which is quite... You know, learning about that in school is quite eye-opening because white Australia is the product of uh, people migrating to Australia. Okay, so I have European heritage, and that's the majority of Australia. And then there's Asian heritage and lots of people, and that's what Australia is made up of. Now, having a look here, we're still... This, this is moving slightly. Looks like our alcohol consumption has dropped. Well, poverty hasn't really gone anywhere. Oops, don't want that. Now, I think that I want to hold for another for another turn. I just want to let it go. I think. Internet, yes, look at it. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. You know, the NBN that would be a brilliant thing. Because here's the thing about games and about the um, the government's own own modelling. How do you quantify the effect of something that you don't know you don't know the effects of, basically? The <laughs> Ooh, this is Okay, that's the euthanasia. Like, um like we, we don't know what the NBN is going to do, because we've never had infrastructure like this. I actually, um, I think it's akin to the, 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 like the, when, when America started putting in all these railway tracks, I, I don't think they really had an idea on how, what that would mean for their country. And America, as a result, became one of the industrial powerhouses of the age, simply because they went and ran a bunch of railway track everywhere. And it cost them a lot of money back in the day. However, they did it because they were visionary, and I, I believe the um, I believe the MBN is much the same. It's infrastructure that has some profound results for business and and for life in general. I've worked at some businesses where the the crusty old people, right, the liberal voters, the liberals are against the MBN, right. And there's these crusty old liberal voters, and they're complaining about internet speed, and they voted against the NBN. <laughs> and it's like, well, hang on a minute, <laughs> you can't you can't complain and not and then vote against it. Like you, you if you're going to complain, you need to fix it. And I think that uh, moving forward, like the uh, a faster infrastructure in that regard, especially as the world moves online, is a huge thing. Uh, how are we looking? We're okay, I think. I think I'm just going to hold for this turn. Yeah, these are a bunch of chumps. I need to get rid of these two. They're horrible. He's okay for some reason. Oh, I've got no idea why. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Ah, Monique. Yeah, no worries. Stress epidemic. Uh, working people too hard. Limits on hours that can... People work to be better enforced by the central government. Okay, uh, we've still got a surplus. Which means that our debt is nicely under control. And our GDP is, yeah, looking okay.
fiber optic internet still being applied across the place and we're at 25 percent nice the conservatives are getting happier positive discrimination <laughs> oh they like that too bad I turned around and brought in something that uh, yeah, completely went the opposite direction to that, what they wanted. Let's have a look here. I, I really feel like this should be higher. Uh, foreign aid, income tax, capital gains tax. We are five. Wow. <laughs> what if I raise that to 90%? It'd make the socialists very, very happy. I think it would completely kill the economy, though. What about, what about, what about, right? If we... What if we bump the... Bump the capital gains up to, say, 7? Just an extra 500, bill, uh, 500 million a quarter. Let's have a look in our policy ideas, see if there's anything here. Uh, refugee camps. Now there's a really, really bad one. It's called Nauru. And there's some shit going down out there that really is not great. And it's, it's part of these, like Christmas Island was another one. Ooh, homeless assistance program. So basically what the government would do is it would grab these people, these refugees, and then stick them in a detention camp. Uh, so that that's currently partly what the Australian government's approach to refugees and is immigrants. Uh, okay. Okay. So this is if we needed to stabilise the uh, inflation rate. This has zero popularity. I don't want to implement that. It's a big cost to do a space program. Uh, airline tax. No, we don't want to do that. I don't think any of those are really what we want to do. Light bulb bear. Wow. Uh, smoking bans are public policies, which... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is to reduce... No, I don't think so. Internet censorship. We won't go there. Because that's, uh, that's an interesting topic, that one. Telecommuting inf initiative. This is something we need to keep in mind. This is extremely popular, and I think we can afford it. So we will do it. Okay, and I will skip to the next turn. Are you aware of the growth in power of a group known as the Moral Crusade. Apparently they are made up of obsessed members of the, from the conservative values group known as the Traditional Values Alliance. It looks like they aren't happy. We have intercepted various chatter that suggests these people might be angry enough to make an attempt on toppling the government. Maybe even a suicide attack against you. Make sure you keep on your toes. Yeah, well, thanks for the advice. It has 122 people. And the threat assessment is very, very high. Ah, uh, wow. Okay. And these are... Yeah. Okay. 
Let's have a look at factory farming law. The tightening of animal welfare standards on farms is gaining momentum. A law has been proposed that would set higher minimum standards for the space, food and access to outdoors that is available to animals in intensive farming establishments. Uh, this is another interesting one that has come up in recent times. Uh, just recently there was a live export ban. So basically, we send a lot of cattle overseas. Uh, lots of it goes to Asia, lots of it goes to the Middle East as well. And there was some video that came out of some halal certified slaughter. And I'm not sure of the religious laws around halal food, but basically the death of these animals was very, very... Um, it wasn't humane. Uh, there was cricket bats involved. Well, not cricket bats. I think it was just, just like a, a wooden stick of some description. Uh, I think a sledgehammer was used on one of them. So some video came out, and basically there was this huge outcry by the Australian people. And it effectively stopped outports, exports to those markets. Uh, the side that the general public didn't see was the farmers. <laughs> The poor farmers suddenly had thousands and thousands and thousands of head of cattle that had nowhere to go. So they lost a lot of money on that. And there was this interesting byplay of, you know, do we protect the animals or do we d protect the people who are sending these animals? And, you know, by protecting the animals, we have actually hurt the people who grow them. So it was an interesting circumstance, and I'm not about to comment one way or another on it, but uh, I think that as a general rule, there needs to be tougher standards. Things need to be humane. So, we have seen a an increase in our income again. Expenditure stays relatively same. Uh, our debt is steadily going down. Now there's, there should be uh, interest as well that we're paying. Where is interest? Debt interest. So currently we're paying a billion bucks in debt interest. So uh, we could, if we can get that debt down, we can effectively get some free money just by game mechanics. It doesn't work like that in real life. Well, it does, but not really. Because the government must spend money to help the economy. Now, it doesn't look like we're going to win that one. It seems like we're we're moving in the right direction here. So parents got a little bit happy by the looks of it. No, they're not parents. Liberals. Yeah, the liberals got a little bit happier. Conservatives didn't like it. Where is the socialist? Here they are. It seems like we've been steadily improving our stance with them. Uh, satisfied. Yeah, but you're not going to vote for me currently. So let's have a look here. The Australian Labour Party. We have zero members and zero activists. Which is interesting. Nobody cares. Ooh, we're seeing that. I wonder if we will actually get rid of it. Because it's currently a bit of a drain on our GDP. It'd be good if we could. Pollution is... Meh. We're not going to stop that one. Asthma is, yeah, we're doing its thing. Uh, what about alcohol consumption? Wow, that's back to where it was. Or alcohol abuse, should I say. Ha! Huh. I wonder. That's the clean fuel subsidy. We've got 28 points to spend. Is there anything in here that we want to do? The transport is pretty soft in terms of the options that it gives us. Let's let's do community policing because that'll get anti-social 
behavior down and alcohol abuse so that that will be a good move i think um and it's also going to improve our thing with liberal crime violent crime will go down racial tension will go down it looks like it's not going to negatively affect any of the voting groups so we'll uh, we'll take that and i think i will end this episode right here so thank you very much for joining me and i look forward to seeing you in the next episode of democracy 3. <laughs>